This video is an introduction for a hobby that captivated me for many years. It drives you out under the night sky to take images which are out of this world. Hello everybody, my name is Tim and I've been practicing astrophotography for the last three years now. While I focus on so-called deep sky astrophotography, I still sometimes take out the tripod and camera and take panorama images of the night sky. And this is where we begin. The first thing to get started in this hobby, and you can definitely add me for that, are clear skies. And even better, dark skies, which means you have to take at least a few steps or maybe a few more steps away from the street lights and go to a dark place. And while I'm trying to achieve that, let's go over the equipment I want to shoot with tonight. This video will not be about smartphone astrophotography. I know that there's a lot of great progress made in that regard. But if you want to capture great star fields and later get in touch with deep sky, you won't get around a DSLR or mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. But let's start at the bottom. The tripod. An essential tool to keep everything stable and secured. It has to carry the camera, a probably pretty heavy telephoto lens and maybe a star tracker. So probably don't go for the $30 tripod from Amazon. I recommend a ball head to make sure that you can point at any target in the night sky with precision and ease. If you are out on the field, spiked feet can also help. And you can weigh most proper tripods down with maybe your backpack to make them more wind resistant. On the top of the tripod could sit the camera, or even better, a star tracker. It's not a must, but it will enable you to do so much more. Longer exposures, lower ISO and maybe even more exposures of the same target to get in touch with stacking. I will leave a link to a few beginner star trackers in the description. They are really easy to use and they are the stepping stone into deep sky astrophotography. Next up is the camera. I am a big fan of DSLRs, but you can also go for mirrorless cameras, as long as you have full manual control and can swap the lenses. The great news is the camera body does not have to be the great price point. As long as you have a decent lens, you can go with maybe a second hand camera. 350 bucks and up. The camera should be controlled by a shutter cable, if it can't do that by itself. This way you can start automating the process and avoid shaky images. And now to the lens. Many people think that you need huge telescopes to capture astrophotography images. While that may be true for certain galaxies and nebula targets, I can tell you that you can start out with any focal length. I only have one recommendation. Make it a prime lens. Zoom lenses generally suffer from distortion and vignetting and are pretty difficult to deal with in post-processing. The lenses I recommend are prime 14 to 125 mm, manual focus and aperture. Examples are my Samyang 14 and 50 mm lenses. Especially the 50 mm with an aperture of 1.4 is amazing for untracked images and even filming in the night. If these are your first steps in astrophotography and you want to start out easy but nevertheless get great images, I have one more thing to mention. Even if you get out of the city, light pollution filters can help a lot. There are even clip-in versions for most DSLRs. But for a more creative touch, I have a star glow filter. With the filter holder in front of the lens, it will make bright stars bigger and enhance their color. Tonight I will take this filter, a star tracker and two DSLRs to show you how you can take your first steps in astrophotography. If you don't have a star tracker, you can't expose for as long as you want. The basic 500 rule is a good orientation. That was still on. With 50mm I can expose for 10 seconds. With 14mm about 20 seconds and with 300 millimeters only about 1.5 seconds before the stars start to trail. So if you don't have a tracker, go for the maximum exposure time before the stars trail and bump up the ISO to get a decently exposed image. And you of course need to set the aperture of the lens to the maximum. In my case this is an f1.4 and you will later see that this will make amazing even live view images through the camera right here, not through this one. 
the horse is unraged. I understand why. But if you want to invest a tiny bit more in this hobby, a star tracker, even a basic star tracker, like this mechanically driven, just with some springs, it's awesome. With a tracker like this, I tried it out, I can expose with 300 millimeters for three minutes maximum. But it's possible, which means I'm able to bump down the ISO, have way less noise in the image, and the aperture is still maximum. That is why I will take this DSLR and this basic, very cheap 300mm lens to get hopefully a decent shot of Andromeda Galaxy tonight. Definitely try to use a basic shutter cable. Just one like this can help a lot. If you don't have one, maybe go for a delayed exposure. About 2 seconds should be enough. And furthermore, you might hear that this mirror is quite loud. At least I think so. And if your camera has a silent shooting mode, definitely enable that. The mirror shock, as we call it, appears when the camera mirror shakes the whole camera so much while starting the exposure that the stars are just a blurry mess. So silent shooting, definitely the way to go. Focusing in the middle of the night can be quite hard. I know, I've tried many times. In my case, my Samyang lenses are pretty much awesome when it comes to focusing because one turn on infinity and over here. And it's pretty much done. If you have a lens you don't trust that much in focusing, there's only trial and error. So try to take different exposures at different focus settings and just try to dial it in. And if you have a good lens, say at least 2.8 or even more, you can even go into video and try to focus the stars there. I'll show you later. But if you use a telephoto lens, which doesn't have an aperture that big, try to go for a bright star. Around this time we even have Jupiter to focus on, which is amazing, it is so bright. It is possible to print Batonov masks for DSLR lenses, but that's not very practical and you have to carry so much equipment with you. Just trail and arrow focusing should be fine. Bump up the ISO if you need to, to get short exposures to speed it up. And now all I have to do is to wait for nightfall. It is kinda cold already, I guess it's the end of summer, but we in Germany didn't have any summer this summer. I guess it rained in Germany all over and the rest of Europe and the world basically was just a burning mess, I guess. But I guess I have to get home and get a jacket as soon as I start. And maybe play with the horses. But waiting for nightfall, I want to do that in style. Alright everybody, I just wanted to show you what a good DSLR and a good lens can do in astrophotography. This is handheld and I'm recording a live video. That's the beautiful planet Jupiter over there. And Saturn. And now I'm gonna put this on a tripod and try to photograph some constellations. Alright, here's the tripod we are going to use now. First I'm gonna install the tracker. And I might wanna hurry, it's getting quite cold. I believe it's 16 degrees Celsius right now. Or maybe even less, maybe 14. Put that on there. Somewhere in this backpack I have... The polar alignment tube, yes. Any tracker like these need to be polar aligned which just means you have to point this correct axis at Polaris. Let me do that. And I'll put the DSLR on here. Go into video, please. Everything we need to focus is here. So I'm gonna use the 10 times zoom. Wait. I can actually see the moons of Saturn. <laughs> this is amazing. But that's not the point today. I want to focus on this. 
all right the camera is on the tripod and here's the first photographing target of the night and i'm gonna have to move fairly quickly i don't want to, the star on the bottom right to disappear that's the big dipper look at this it's cassiopeia and let's see i wonder if i can actually make andromeda galaxy visible in this live view i highly doubt it but i will just photograph this first all right i know we can use cassiopeia to find andromeda galaxy form a line between this triangle of stars down here and the bright star in the center hop one up hop one up and there it is we can i can actually detect this light from andromeda galaxy with my dslr and the, with this lens there's actually light from andromeda galaxy coming on here we see this galaxy amazing all right, the Andromeda Galaxy really seems to be a bit tough and the cold wind is pulling up right now. I'm gonna head home now. But I hope you found this video at least interesting and that you saw that you don't have to do that much to get some first steps into astrophotography. And with this I'm gonna now pack this in and head home because it's getting cold. As for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us. Hello everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I make videos all about astrophotography and have many tutorials online that can help you on the way. A big part of this hobby is editing your images afterwards. To practice, I share most of my imaging data on my Patreon account, link in the description. You can practice and at the same time support the channel. Thank you very much. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.